dear students uh, today we are going to discuss a new topic that is SOPS which is one of the modules in your uh, in your course that is chemistry in everyday life my name is Amur Osinjos and I will be discussing two modules in this semester in open course that is SOPS as well as cosmetics so SOPS is one of the most widely used and important uh, day to day things in our life and recently the importance of soap has increased very much and uh, whenever if you are using a mobile phone or calling some person or even uh, switching on the TV this is uh, uh, about 80 percent 80 chance that you will be hearing something regarding washing your hands uh, using soap and all you should wash your hands 20 seconds prior to anything that you uh, that you are doing in your home or office so uh, this is due to the COVID pandemic. Uh, what we are going to discuss is about soaps. Uh, what what are what are the chemical composition and what how they work, etc. So before going further, I just want you to know uh, soap is not a very novel uh, material that was found recently in uh, the 1900s or anything. It was actually been used in 2000 BC itself by various civilizations for cleansing purposes uh, but it was only during the industrial revolution period soap was synthesized in a large scale until then soap until the industrial revolution period soap was uh, produced in a small scale in small uh, places at all but after industrial revolution it was actually commercialized and large and large amount of soaps were produced industrially How, however in during the 1850s uh, some countries like uh, united kingdom considered soap as a luxury item and imposed a tax uh, like soap tax or soap tax on this particular com um, commodity uh, which was for uh, which was extended up to 1853 and after 1853 there was no soap tax and uh, on the nowadays we are mainly focused uh, mainly using liquid soaps and this liquid soaps actually came into existence or was invented only in the uh, 1890s or uh, 19th century so the first uh, liquid soap was palm olive that was developed from palm oil and olive oil from a mixture of palm oil and olive oil so uh, soap is widely used uh, material in our day to day life and uh, its action may be very much familiar to you because in this scenario of COVID and all there were many discussion regarding how soap works and how it can easily remove the dirt or oil particles on the surface of a material or hands so here also we are mainly focusing on uh, what soap uh, what soap is uh, how they cleanse and uh, how they are classified etc now uh, in brief we have a seven hour session uh, in our syllabus uh, we will be discussing the action of soap uh, the classification of soap and what are the additives and that is added to added into the soap and how the acidity and alkalinity of soap is important and how it will affect the uh, how it can be quantified how how it will affect the body and all so this is the basic structure or basic outline of the uh, module so by definition soaps are surfactants that is they will be reducing the surface tension of a liquid uh, for usually in chemistry sense the definition that is given for soaps are they are sodium or potassium salts of fatty acids such as stearic acid, palmitic acid and oleic acid. So here you can see this is a, a fat or oil. So this is actually a triester. Here you can see a glycerol kind of unit and which is linked to 
uh, fatty acid and this particular species will be undergoing uh, hydrolysis alkaline hydrolysis to give glycerol and sodium salt of fatty acid and this sodium salt of fatty acid is termed as soap so this particular reaction that is hydrolysis of triglyceride to give glycerol and sodium salt of fatty acid is termed as saponification so uh, this is this is saponification and this is the process that is occurring when you are preparing soap and uh, usually what we do is that you will be taking a calculated uh, uh, known amount of oil of fat you'll be heating that to a particular temperature and known amount of a calculated amount of caustic soda or, co or caustic potash will be added to that particular molten oil of fat this reaction will occur, there will be a reaction and ultimately you will be getting soap which is the sodium salt of corresponding fatty acid so coming to the structure of soap, uh, the structure of soap can be like this, that is it is having a long uh, hydrocarbon structure, long chain hydrocarbon structure. At the end of the hydrocarbon structure you will be having a polar group. So the, it is termed as a non-polar tail and polar head. So here you can see uh, this a simple structure of a soap molecule. And all this hydrocarbon chain will be imparting a hydrophobic nature for this particular species in this region. And this polar head that is COO minus uh, part of this molecule will be imparting a hydrophilic nature for this compound. So a soap molecule will be having a hydrophilic head and a hydrophobic chain, uh, tail. This tail will be easily soluble in organic media or organic solvents whereas uh, the polar head will be having more affinity towards water or polar solvents for uh, effective cleansing action by soap it must contain 12 to 18 carbon atoms so the number of carbon atoms present in this region should be 12 to 18 if the number of carbon atoms is more than 22 uh, the soap will be insoluble and it wouldn't be giving you uh, cleansing action so now moving on to how the soap works soaps are excellent uh, compounds which has emulsifying actions so uh, emulsifying is a process by which uh, two liquids will be made miscible to each other so a uh, simple example is you may be familiar with the production of mayonnaise many of you will be would have tried to synthesize now to prepare mayonnaise in your home and for mayonnaise you have to use oil egg yolk lemon juice vinegar and seasonings so uh, oil and lime juice or uh, vinegar will not be miscible to each other we will be adding the egg yolk as a emulsifier emulsifier means the egg yolk will be making these two miscible to each other if you are not able to mix this properly uh, you will be getting a dense layer and a uh, liquid like layer separated in the particular sample uh, to get a evenly mixed mayonnaise you have to beat it very well and uh, the egg yolk should be able to mix with the oil and the uh, aqueous kind of medium and here in the case of soap also soap can act as an emulsifying agent so uh, usually the dirt in your cloth or dirt in your uh, dress will be organic nature which, which is not soluble in water usually uh, if the dirt that is present in your cloth is water soluble we can easily remove that by uh, washing it with water so the reason why the dirt is not removed from the cloth is that the dirt is not soluble in water so when you add soap to the cloth that is immersed or immersed in water media uh, what happens is that the soap molecules the tail the tail portion of the soap molecules which is hydrophobic will be going towards the dirt particles it will be 
attaching itself to that dirt particles. But the polar end would be directed towards the water molecule that is present in the surroundings of the cloth. So as you rinse this particular uh, cloth, what happens is that the interaction between the polar head and water will be high and ultimately the dirt will be removed off from the cloth. So here you can see how this actually works. So here uh, this is a depiction of how a soap molecule look like. Here you have the hydrophobic tail which is containing carbon and hydrogen alone and this is a hydrophilic head which is having COO minus. This is a polar end of the soap molecule and this is actually uh, attracted to water molecule and this is actually attracted to oil molecule so oils will be easily attack, attract to this part so we can use either bar kind of soap or other powder soap and uh, when you take the cloth and immerse that in water you can see that is not dissolving the dirt is not dissolving in water because it is not miscible uh, it is not soluble in water so next thing is that you will be keeping that cloth there and adding soap into that the soap molecules is having a, a hydrophobic tail which is going to attach with the dirt molecules or dirt so uh, the all the soap molecules will be coming like this and they will be attaching themselves on the dirt and the polar group will be projected outwards and it will be interacting with the water and ultimately the dirt and the dirt on the cloth will be removed and this kind of structures will be formed uh, which can, that, are, that are termed as micelle and they will be having an hydrophobic uh, kind of region inside the shell and hydrophilic region outside the shell. The dirt molecules or dirt particles will be present within these shells. So and in the, in the, each of this micelle will be having a negative charge so they won't be interacting each other. So ultimately when you rinse the cloth the dirt particle will be removed as micelle and you will be getting a clean cloth. So this is how the particular soap works. And soaps are classified into different categories. That is hard soap, soft soap, medicated soap, transparent soap, baby soap, etc. Hard soaps are also known as washing soaps. They are actually uh, produced by using cheap oil and caustic soda. They contain more free alkali. And hence, they, they won't be very much good for good to be used on our skin. And usually they contain silicate or white clay as filler and a cheap perfume. Uh, usually, they won't, we won't prefer to use hard soap or washing soap on our skin. And the second type of, type of soap is soft soaps or toilet soaps. They are actually uh, potassium salts of fatty acids. Instead of sodium hydroxide, you will be using potassium hydroxide for saponification process. So, in the case of soft soap, you will be using best quality oils and fats and caustic potash. The excess alkali present will be removed by salting out process. That is, you will be uh, precipitating the soap and the excess alkali can be removed. They contain further additives such as dyes, perfumes, creams, oils and bactericide for, uh, for the improvement of the properties. And they are usually more expensive than hard soaps. And they usually don't, do not injure the skin. So hard soap and soft soap, they are different. They differ in the quality of the oil that you are using and the type of alkali that you are using. And you would be uh, doing a salting out process in the case of soft soap to remove the excess alkali. Uh, now comes the medicated soap. Medicated soap, as the name itself shows, it is containing some kind of uh, antibacterial uh, factors. So they are also known as antibacterial soaps. Detol, uh, Savlon, Neem, Nightboy etc. comes under medicated soap. They have a, an 
back to the cidal ingredient also. Now we have uh, the next class that is transparent soap. Transparent soap uh, may be familiar to you that is spears and all are classified as transparent soaps and they have high glycerin content. Also uh, they are referred to as glycerin soaps also. Uh, in addition to that we will be adding some emollients oils also like shea butter, jojoba oil etc for imparting uh, more moisturizing kind of nature and it is partially containing soap and partially solvent and uh, usually usually how we uh, the reason for the opaque nature of uh, the other kind of soaps or toilet soaps is due to the presence of large crystals of soaps that is uh, formed due to the uh, when reacting with sodium hydroxide so a large crystals of sodium hydroxide will make the particular soap op opaque but in the case of transparent soap what we will be doing is that we will be adding we will be dissolving this large crystals in in solvent so that only small small crystals will be present in the soap and this small small crystals will be able to and the light would be able to pass through the particular medium since the crystal size is very small and we will be getting transparent kinds of soap usually uh, solvents will be used for this purpose and solvents usually used are glycerol or a mixture of glycerol and alcohol and another kind of soap is baby soap baby soap is uh, very much different from the other kind of soap because it has to be very pure because baby skin will be very much sensitive to chemicals and all so what we'll be doing is that uh, the oil that you will be using will be extra pure and it will be bleached to remove any kind of uh, uh, colorant and all and we usually do not add any pigment or fragments or minimum fragments will be only used and uh, another important thing is that the presence of alkali usually we are doing alkaline hydrolysis so alkali presence and there is a possibility for the presence of alkali but in the case of baby soap uh, it is essential to minimize the alkali content and it is mandatory that the alkali content free alkali content should not exceed 0.05 percentage in that particular kind of soap and it is uh, another important thing is that since we are not adding any perfume or any uh, additives uh, this would be much more cheaper than the luxury soaps so these are the different kinds of soap that we usually use for cleansing purposes and there are other kinds of soap also uh, like calcium soap magnesium soap etc they are usually insoluble in water and usually used as lubricants in paints uh, and preparation of waterproof materials and in ointments face powders etc like uh, zinc and magnesium stearate are usually used in cosmetics and aluminium soaps are usually used in textile and leather waterproofing and lead oleate is a particular compound that is used for making plasters in plastic surgery so all these are the main classification of uh, different types of soaps now coming to liquid soap as we have already mentioned about liquid soap it was uh, only prepared or invented in 19th century early 19th century and the palm olive was the first liquid soap that was developed or invented and it actually was made by using a mixture of palm oil and olive oil the importance of uh, liquid soap is that it can imp it can impart a much more efficient kind of cleaning so after you clean a cloth with soap it, it is necessary that the soap molecules also leave the cloth should not be uh, retained on the cloth so liquid soap can be easily used and easily removed from the uh, surface or corresponding cloth and it is one of the important application of liquid soap when compared to the bar, bar kind of soaps so it works much better than the other soaps uh, it can be prepared it is, here you can see a simple preparation procedure for liquid soap and uh, for any 
for the preparation of any soap you actually require a kind of oil or fat and an alkali so in the case of uh, a liquid soap that is mentioned here we use coconut oil instead of coconut oil you can use any kind of oil like uh, palm oil olive oil anything so uh, next you have to use uh, alkali in use, usual cases we use potassium based co caustic potash and uh, borax will be used as a material to enhance uh, use of a flux and cleansing agent as well as antiseptic preservative cleanser as well as water softener in liquid soap manufacturing and in most of the cases you can if you are looking into the uh, ingredients of a liquid soap you can see glycerin sugar etc and glycerin is actually used as a moisturizer and sugar to improve or increase the lather formation of the soap increase the lather we use a small amount of sugar and obviously water will be present in that particular system and you will be adding some suitable perfumes for imparting fragrance so this is uh, the basics about soaps and the next class we will be discussing uh, how you can grade the soaps and uh, an alternative to soap that is bathing baths and uh, what are the limitations of soap so today we discussed about soaps what are soaps how they work and different types of soaps and liquid soaps so in the uh, in, you have to remember that soaps are sodium salt of fatty acid or sodium or potassium salt of fatty acid that is formed by saponification should know what is saponification saponification is actually a process by which uh, the triglycerides will be undergoing hydrolysis to form sodium salt of fatty acid that is soap as well as glycerol and uh, then we mentioned about the action of soap action of soap uh, uh, soap will be acting as an emulsifier it is a surfactant that reduces the surface tension of a water and in presence of soap the uh, and soap will be having a structure in which there is a hydrophobic and a hydrophilic part uh, when you are mixing soap with a, a cloth containing dirt the hydrophobic part will be going towards the dirt and hydrophilic part will be projecting outwards and a spherical kind of structure nano structure will be formed that is micelle and micelles will be carrying the dirt inside that particular shell and each micelle, micelle will be having a negative charge due to the projection of the polar groups the O minus groups outside the shell and uh, there are different kinds of soaps based on the nature of oil used nature of bases used and 